Good morning campers, welcome back. About five to six months ago we picked up a Travelfy router for our camper just so we could stay connected while we're out boondocking and traveling across the country and um, it worked really good. Very strong signal most of the time. There was a couple places where we were right on the edge. I contacted Travelfy and lo and behold I found out that they actually offer a rooftop mounted antenna that uh, is supposed to really boost up your signal so uh, I got one here and that's what we're gonna be hooking up today um, especially since it's blue skies and no rain so here's what the piece looks like and I'll be hooking this up on top of another box that I have this is gonna go on the roof as is this unit does come with a mounting plate that screws flat to the roof but because I have another project down the road that I need this entry box for we will be uh, mounting it on top of this it does have 3m tape it's a sealant slash adhesive that holds this down and on the bottom side of this antenna it has a rather large stainless steel nut and a flat washer that helps pin this down and makes it a watertight connection so we're gonna get up on the roof why it's uh, blue skies and not snowing and we're gonna hook this up all right, we'll be right back. So I have a clip of the two routers they offer. The one on the left is a highly portable unit. Once you charge it up, you can throw it in your backpack, your jacket, uh, briefcase, whatever, and have Wi-Fi pretty much everywhere you go. The unit on the left is what we bought. It's the XTR. It's a different classification heavy-duty router and we wanted the antenna on the roof. So that's what this scope is for. So there are a couple things here that I wanted to show you. Uh, the box I got from Amazon, the butyl tape, that's a really soft, sticky tape. The stainless steel screws that I used and also the sealant. It's sealant adhesive uh, for marine use. It's waterproof, I've been using it for years. This is good stuff. I used a hole saw kit, just big enough so that the pipe would stick through this hole and I could get it to seal up. Uh, you can use a Vera bit, but I had one that was a perfect fit for this. Once you got the hole drilled and deburred, you can uh, peel the tape back, situate your antenna the way you want, and press that down and get a good tight snug seal, put the flat washer, lock washer, and the nut on, snug it up with channel locks, and you're pretty much ready to go. So we're going to measure this about 15,000 times, but we're going to come over 18 inches and about 36 inches down is where the hole is going to come through, and then our watertight box, big gasket, bunch of the sealer for the roof that's going to be where this uh, connecting point goes and this box will serve other purposes for a couple other things coming up so that's what we're going to try wish me luck when you're drilling the hole don't put a lot of downforce on that drill bit because that ceiling on the inside of your camper is not very far away and you don't want to plunge through and bust a hole in it so take your time go slow and you won't crack through the other ceiling and make a mess of it I'm not going to kid you, fishing wires through the roof isn't exactly a good time, but I got lucky and we got it on the second try. Okay, so we went downstairs and we're able to pick this orange up. I know, kind of cheesy, right? But you got to take whatever you can get. I couldn't see this black thing in the ceiling because it was dark and I have a tiny hole drilled but when I fished this through with the orange it showed right up grabbed it with a needle nose and now once I set my box I can tie my antenna wire to this and pull it right through so you know sometimes you got to take what you got and I'm definitely gonna take the easy way on this one all right let's pull these wires in So 
So you'll notice on the bottom of my plastic box, there's butyl tape. You peel the back side of the uh, sealer liner off that tape. But before you put that down, I put an abundant amount of the sealant adhesive. This way, when I set this piece down and I get it square where it belongs, I have a nice gasket of tape. And behind that, I, to back it up, I have the sealant that's a real heavy amount. And when the box is done, you go around and finish that. So it is watertight right away. You can see that I used electrician's tape to tie the antenna wire onto my little pull string. This way it came through the ceiling without any issues at all. There was a couple different reasons I chose this plastic box to use on the roof. One, it's made out of ABS material. It's UV resistant. It was 16 bucks and it had a gasketed top on it. So the chances of getting any water in are very slim, but um, use a lot of tape and a lot of adhesive and you won't have any trouble with the leak. So this would be a good section to pause. Here's a couple notes on the procedure for setting the wires onto the router. And, and there's a diagram right behind it. You might want to save these two. So we ran nine different speed tests in two different small rural towns and the average of all these tests using just the onboard antenna we had an average download of 75 megabytes per second with two to four megabytes per second upload speed still pretty good when i switched it over to the rooftop antenna and ran the test, we had an average speed of 103 meg down and five to nine megabytes per second up. So is it really all that important? I could run everything we own with these onboard antennas without using the roof, but the roof could be the difference when you're out in the boonies of having a signal and not having a signal. So it's, it's not a huge gain, but it can be a difference maker if you're just on the edge. One last little tip I want to give you is to take a peek at the portal of the Travel 5. You own this and you're having trouble with the issue of the router connecting right away. There's a restart function that is in your best favor to click on it and it'll automatically send a signal reboot the router. There's also a section to manually swap networks. I have found that to not be very useful at all. Uh, in fact, the quickest way to get this thing to uh, search 
would be to power it down. Grab yourself something to cold to drink and plug it back in. And that thing will take off. Uh, this is only after you're moving around a lot, but it doesn't do it often, but sometimes it's best just to cycle the power on this thing for three minutes. So check back in the video description. I'll have the links provided to the antenna and the routers that we talked about here today. If you found this video useful, we'd appreciate if you'd smash that like button. Thanks for watching.